What's good everybody, it's Jordan Pickle and I can officially say that we've made it. It is that crazy season I had seen coming but didn't know what to expect of April and May with so many pickleball paddle companies coming out with some great releases, some new technologies, and some things I'm very excited about. I mentioned this just to let you guys know that while I am still working on the Perseus paddle review, there's just going to be some things that I'm going to be excited about and I might just have to put in the middle of other reviews. So while I'm still working on the Perseus review, uh, I, there's something that came in the mail and I just couldn't wait any longer to show it to you guys. But part of why I'm so excited about it, it has to do with my own journey as a pickleball player. As many of you know, the very first paddle that I bought when I started playing pickleball was a Ben Johns fiberglass Yola paddle that I got on a two pack from Amazon. It did the job and it worked pretty good, but what a lot of people don't know is the second paddle I bought was a Bison paddle also from Amazon. Uh, and that was fine. It was a good Gen 1 paddle and it helped me learn to work with spin. It was a nice square shape and it helped me really increase my hand speed but also get used to more powerful and technologically advanced paddles. Those two paddles were great but I think where I really started to notice huge gains in my play and in my uh, efficiency as a player was when I purchased my third and most important paddle and that was the Vatic Pro. This paddle was also the first paddle that I watched reviews of before buying, so that was a huge part of my decision, and that's also why I love doing my own reviews, just to help people out when they're trying to determine what paddle might be best for them. So the Vatic Pro was the first paddle I won a tournament with. It was the first paddle uh, that had thermoform technology that I used, and it was the biggest sweet spot I'd ever seen in a paddle, and honestly, it still might be. I wish I could show you that Vatic Pro, but it also happened to be the first paddle I sold as my collection began to grow, and as I started to play more with the Prism Flash, and it was also the first time my wife got mad at me for selling a paddle, as I did not realize that that was the one she preferred to play with because of that sweet spot. Also, one of the very first videos I have on this channel is a review of the Vatic Prism Flash, and it was one of the videos that encouraged me to continue making videos for the pickleball community. All that to say, Vatic, I appreciate you as a company so much, and I'm so excited that Vatic is one of the companies that is moving forward in this new generation of pickleball technology with a very cool paddle featuring a very cool design, the Vatic Ani. Now I hope I'm pronouncing that right, it's either Ani or Oni, so if you hear me call it either of those during this video, hopefully one of those is correct. As I mentioned, Vatic is really stepping into new territories with this paddle and is joining the new generation of pickleball technology and I'm so excited that we have not only just the Flash but also the V7 models of the Vatic Ani Launch Edition. It's all around just a great looking paddle and I almost don't want to say too much about it because there's not much I would change. We'll do a brief overview though just so we can kind of see and compare it to other paddles. So we'll start with a flash because this was the one that I personally preferred of the Vatic Pro line. Um, but I'm very, very excited to try the V7 now that I've been so used to elongated paddles. So with the Launch Edition, you get this amazing dragon design and you get this special Launch Edition badge or kind of recognition at the top. Similar to other Vatic paddles, you have the carbon fiber as well as the model and thickness listed on the sides of the paddle. Going down, you have this nice overgrip holder as well as this shiny nice handle, which is not super long. And then on the bottom, we have this awesome looking Vatic Pro badge. I've said this for a long time, but I really do believe that Vatic makes some of the best looking paddles. They have this awesome looking matte uh, edge guard. They have a very understated design, although this one has a little bit more going on with the graphic, and there's really not much I would complain about. I mentioned this once before, and I'm gonna mention this again. Maybe in the next generation we'll see this, or maybe I'm the only one who cares, but I, of the two texts, I prefer this font to this. So it'd be great to see this font recognized with the logo and maybe again with the band, but those are very minor complaints for what I think is probably one of the top three best looking paddles, if not the best looking paddle on the market. I do have to mention that the dragon design that you see here is specific for the Ani launch edition. So if you wanna get the special design, that is something that you uh, will have to get early, you'll have to get ahead of time, and pre-orders for this paddle begin May 1st. Moving over to the V7, you get much of the same, so we won't cover it too much, but you do get a different shape. 
Before we get into the specifics of why I'm so excited about the technology of this paddle, let's compare them again to some of their contemporaries in the market and see how they stack up as far as sizing and face goes. So I think the most direct comparison that's still relevant to where the market is now is the 6.0 uh, double black diamond. And let's put those side by side just so you can kind of see how they stack up. Now it looks like the handle may be ever so slightly shorter on the Vatic. However, it looks like it might be a little bit taller. So that might just be how I'm lining them up. They are very, very similar otherwise, and the face is almost identical. If you are used to a double black diamond, I can confidently say that this should be a pretty easy switch as far as shape and size goes. Again, comparing it to the Vatic Prism Flash, uh, this is the 14 millimeter just to uh, let you guys know it's again a very similar story and I'm very confident and glad that you get that same solid handle design That is one of my favorite things about Vatic paddles. Lastly, we'll compare it to the uh, Loco by bread and butter and one thing I noticed is I think and This could be you could tell me if I'm wrong. It looks like the handle might be a little bit longer However, it looks like the bread and butter slightly extends as a paddle I'm not sure if that's because the face is bigger or because it may have potentially a larger edge guard That's something to consider but all in all it's a very Standard shape and size for a hybrid paddle, which I think is a good thing now the v7 I'm excited to try because I've been using more and more uh, elongated paddles and when I was using the Vatic Pro Flash I hadn't used so many of them so I'm very excited to try this and compare this to the two paddles I've probably used the most over the last few months the first being the Gearbox Pro Power elongated when we compare them we do see a little bit of loss in handle here so that's something to consider if you do like a two-handed backhand this might be a little bit harder on the Vatic Pro but you it does look like the Ani gives you a little bit of tapering room here to overgrip, so we'll have to try that as we add those later down the line. Another thing to note is that it does seem that the gearbox has a slightly uh, taller face, however, it does not look quite as wide as the face on the Vatic. This is typical as the gearbox has a little bit different of a face design than most elongated paddles, so that's something to keep in mind. Moving on to the Perseus by Yola, you see the Ani again has a slightly shorter handle, but otherwise has very similar shape and design. I think we get a little more face material on the bottom as it extends a little bit more in the corners. Now I do use a two-handed backhand and I do like having a nice long handle for most of the paddles I use. In fact, that was the reason I went with a Perseus. However, I do think that this handle is still long enough for me to get two hands on there, although not quite as comfortably, um, as long as I line up my fingers a little bit lower on the handle. This is something I've been doing more and more lately anyways, after watching a video by Davis Pickleball, uh, which was of Yame Martinez Vic showing his serve, and really just realizing how much more power you can get anyways by lowering in your hand position on the paddle. I am curious and I wish I had the Magnus paddle to compare um, as far as how this shape sticks up with that paddle as it has a larger face kind of similar to that one. So that's a brief comparison in size uh, and shape of the paddles and honestly when it comes to size and shape they're pretty similar to a lot of the things on the market so those wouldn't be the reasons you'd buy them. Now looks may be the reason you buy them because again I think that these are some of the best looking if not the best looking paddles I've ever seen um, and they're also they just feel great they really do feel amazing. But beyond the looks beyond the shape and even beyond the build construction of the paddles why am I so excited for Vatic? Well, as I said earlier, one of the things I loved about the Vatic was the fact that it had such a good sweet spot, was so easy to control, and really was a good time for both me as a beginner and me as I continued in my pickleball journey and career. And Vatic once again is doing something I have never seen in a paddle, and I will have to include some screenshots of it here, but it is using a little bit of both the technology of the Gearbox Pro Power and the Yola paddle. Now this was described on a podcast uh, by John Q discussing paddle technology. There are a couple different ways that people are achieving what is called a floating core, which is giving the core a little more give and more room to move as the paddle itself is being used. Now the first people to kind of invent this floating core was Gearbox with the Gearbox Power 
and control series in which they used foam as a construction. I will include a photo of that here. Now this is one of the first times we saw a company moving away from using polypropylene in the core and instead using a totally different core that is so drastically different in construction when Gearbox invented and used their SST core in this paddle. Now the foam, when reacting with the ball, when the force is given, it returns back in that same spot and it goes throughout the paddle. Now this is one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't like that paddle and one of the reasons I liked it so much because even though it felt drastically different than every other paddle, once you got used to that force and return, you really could predict where that power was coming from. You could disguise it well and you could expect immediate force right away. Now, one of the things that makes this hard is that, well, it gives you an amazing feeling. It does lose a lot of integrity because of that construction and the sweet spot suffers greatly. Now, Yola, they decided to use a little bit different technology. They use two different kinds of foam on the top portion of their paddles. Now, how that differs from the gearbox as well the gearbox returns that force immediately back to the spots because of the foam instead we see a floating top part of the paddle so instead of getting a trampoline effect you get more of a diving board effect so you get more power in return the higher you go on the paddle but less as you get lower and lower now that's a lot of information and it probably isn't that interesting to most of you but for me I really like what I saw in the video by Vatic and I'm really excited to try it out. So do uh, subscribe and like this video if you want a follow-up video because there is definitely going to be a full review of this paddle line. Now Vatic is also using new technologies for this paddle but they're not doing either one of those specifically. Instead of using a diving board or a simple foam core, Vatic is again doing something that I think should combine the stability I like of polypropylene with the excitement and the game changing aspects of having foam in your core. And that is a spatula design where they are combining both foam in strips and polypropylene in strips to give you more stability while giving you a lot of energy return in the paddle. I have a picture of it up on the screen and you can really see how this is different than the other two designs and why it, I'm so excited to try this paddle out. Now I mentioned that the sweet spot was something I always liked about Vatic paddles and I did go ahead and hit ahead of time and I can tell you right now that my early testings would indicate that this is going to be another great sweet spot. You can see even right now that even with a small wrist movement you get quite a bit of return. So I'm curious what the power is going to look like for this paddle. Now, I, I know that the foam is not necessarily always where the ball is gonna be hitting, but I do believe that some amount of foam will be involved in most of the returns. So we should see a good sweet spot and also an increase in power from the last pro line. I'm very excited to try both of these paddles out to see how their power, how their pop, and how their stability all compares, as well as the feel, because ultimately that's what it amounts to. Now I've seen a lot of people condemning the Perseus line and a lot of these Gen 3 saying that the power pop and spin are combining to make a very hard paddle for intermediate and beginner players. And while I can agree to some of these claims, I also think that having exposure to new technologies is always great because it helps a player determine what they like and what they dislike in a paddle and what matches their play style. Now what I like so much about the Vatic line is they've shown that you can really have new technologies but also make a paddle that is approachable for beginners, intermediate intermediates and pro players. I'm excited to see what combination Vatic has to offer with this paddle and how it will move the company forward and I'm glad to see that they did so in such a cool looking paddle in such a cool way. And one thing I haven't even mentioned is that this paddle is significantly cheaper than the other new generation of paddles and I think that will be one of the most important aspects of it because it will make this paddle more approachable to a lot of players. And it's even cheaper if you use my code Jordan Irwin, all caps. All that to say I'm very excited about the Oni paddle by Vatic Pro and this new generation that they are embarking on. I know it's going to move the industry forward especially by offering such new technologies at such an affordable price. I will definitely be working on a full review as soon as I can so if you have any questions that you would like answered for that please include those in the comments below as well as any critique or criticism that you might have to make these videos even better for y'all. Be sure to like and subscribe as well as comment if you want to join in in the conversation and I'm excited to continue making these videos for you guys. It's definitely been a blessed point of the year and I'm excited to enter into this new season of paddle technology altogether. That's all I got for you. God bless. Have a good one.